Hola, welcome back to my Spanish kitchen. This is where I have fun making all kinds of super tasty dishes based on Spain's incredibly healthy Mediterranean diet. So if you're interested in learning some Spanish classics, go ahead and click on the subscribe button below and join me today as we make croquetas. They're famous all over Spain. They're served in tapas bars, cafes, and restaurants, frequently as a first course, or just as a tapa along with a caña or a glass of wine. So let's get started. Let's talk about the ingredients. There aren't very many and it's pretty simple. We start by making a basic bechamel sauce. It's going to include 60 milliliters of olive oil. I chose frantoil because it's got this incredibly floral, fruity, and sweet flavor to it. And I just think it'll complement the bechamel better. Your option, if you don't want to use olive oil, is to use four tablespoons of butter. But I'd stick with olive oil. It's a little bit more Spanish that way. I'm going to mince half an onion and we'll add that to the sauce. We'll also add an equal amount or 60 grams of all-purpose flour and that helps to make a roux. And a roux is the basis of any cream sauce that you would have made for gravy when you have Thanksgiving. But in this case, it's the bechamel. Next is our liquid and this will be 400 milliliters of warm milk and 200 milliliters of cream. I love this little cream. You can get it at the store, it's just a tiny little amount and lets me be a, a, a little wicked by adding cream and I know I won't have leftovers. Then we have just a few seasonings, salt, pepper, and a little bit of classic nutmeg, which normally goes with a bechamel. And then for today, we're going to make chicken croquettes. So I already roasted and shredded two and a half cups of chicken, give or take about 250 grams, and that's about it. So we can put all these ingredients together and get going. I added 60 milliliters of olive oil, got it to a low temperature, just to simmer, at about 120 degrees centigrade, which is a low medium. And I've added the onions and I just want them to very gently cook until they're translucent. It'll take us 10 minutes and then we'll add the flour. Next ingredient, we're going to take the 60 grams of flour. We're going to add it all at once to this beautifully softened but not browned onion. And I'm going to stir it and this will take just a couple of minutes. We want the flour to cook because if you've ever made a gravy with uncooked flour, you know what it tastes like. It's like paste. Now I'm going to add the milk, but I'm not going to add it all at once. I'm going to add a little at a time, whisking as I go. And I'm just going to go ahead and add the rest of the milk. Mix this in. And then finally, we'll add that cream. And this is the decadent part. I've stirred it on and off for the past 10 minutes. It's nice and thick and rich. Our next things are to add some seasoning. And here's my trick. A lot of people will tell you to add one or two teaspoons of salt right now. I never want to do that because if the ham is salty enough or the chicken's salty enough, I like to taste it when it's all done. But I know it doesn't have any pepper in it. So I'm going to add about a quarter teaspoon of pepper. And then the all important nutmeg. Nutmeg is such a classic. Bechamel sauces are always made with nutmeg and the flavor is just really lovely. So that's it, about an eighth of a teaspoon. Now I'm gonna mix this all together a little bit. And now add all the chicken. And once this is well mixed, we turn off the heat. And then all we have to do is let this chill. It's cool to the touch. It's been a half an hour. Let's take off the lid. It's perfectly set up. And even better when it goes into this pan and into the refrigerator for four hours. Feel 
Wow. <laughs> Olive oil makes it really easy to wash dishes. Now I'm just going to smooth it out to the edges. The purpose of this is croquettas are little batons, kind of like your thumb. And if I can get this to a nice even size before it goes in the fridge, then when it comes out, all I have to do is cut this block up into even size pieces and it makes it so much easier. It's been a little bit more than four hours. I'm going to unmold this. It's gotten nice and chilled in the refrigerator. So I'll take off the plastic wrap on the top. And now I can use the bottom plastic wrap to lift it right out and bring it right over to the cutting board. Just like that. Very easy. And instead of using a knife, I'm going to use this pastry cutter. It's a little bit easier. And I want to cut what I think is about the width of each of the croquetas. And then I'll cut them in thirds. This works so nice. Instead of having to scoop it and manually figure out if you've got about the right amount, that's all I need to do. Now I'm going to cut them into almost actually, I'm going to cut them into quarters going across. And now all I have to do is take one, mold it just a little bit so we have a nice shape. Croquettas are generally about the size of a fat thumb. And I'm going to set them right here. I'll just do a couple of them, but we'll get started with this. Just like that. It's time to get these ready for the deep fryer. I've taken out six of all the ones I formed. These are going right into the freezer as soon as we're done with this job, so I can save these for another party. The six I put in just a very light coating of flour. That's the first part. Then I'm going to dip them in egg wash, and this is one egg with about two tablespoons of water, mixed really well, and then into a finely ground panko, any kind of breadcrumb you could use. But I like panko because it's so fine, and especially if you put it through the food processor and get it even ground even finer, makes a lovely finish. So also, I'm only going to use one hand as I do this. The next part is to simply coat them with some panko. And this too just needs to be a light dusting. Roll them around just a little bit so that they're, they're completely coated, ends and all. And shower them with some of this incredibly fine panko. We're all set for the deep fry. Temperature is exactly at 190. I'm going to very gently slide these in. You don't want them to splatter, so just be a little cautious. But see how it's bubbling right away? That tells you this oil is exactly right. Now, of course, the temperature will drop a little bit as I put the croquettas in, but that's okay. It'll come back to temperature, and we're going to fry these for about three to four minutes. As long as they're nice and golden brown on the outside, the idea is to have the inside really luscious and creamy and saucy almost. So look at that beautiful bubbling we've got going. It's been four minutes, so I'm ready to take them out. They look beautiful, golden brown. I'm gonna move them over to a plate lined with some paper towel so they drain nicely. And then I have to be patient because <laughs> I'm always ready to eat these the minute they come out. And of course, you can't do that. You burn your mouth. So patience pays off. We want them cool so that they don't burn our tongue when we're trying them. But you also don't want them to get too cool because one of the beauties of having a croqueta is having it nice and hot and meltingly creamy on the inside. And that's what we're planning on having. It was a lot of fun to make this. A little bit of trouble, but worth every bit. So now let's taste it and see what we think. Typically these are finger food, but I'm going with a knife and fork. And look at that, nice and 
creamy and luscious on the inside. Wow. It's a little bite of decadence. <laughs> it's really good. Chef Katie Button from a restaurant, Curate, in South Carolina, but she studied in Spain, talks about these as miniature chicken pot pies. I completely agree. They're lovely to have as a start to a meal or with a glass of wine or a caña or just bubbly water. They'd be lovely with just about everything. So I hope to see you again soon. And in the meantime, try out making these croquetas. I guarantee you're gonna be the head of the party.